Welcome. I've had an excellent deer season this year. I couldn't ask for much more. Well, I could ask for a better video experience, but it's my first year recording hunts and I'm learning my limitations. Like recording an intro before the hunt. I have had a lot of times when I thought the camera was running and in fact it wasn't. Even with my rifle buck, which you'd think would be easier to get on camera. This year, a lot was learned on YouTube videos. I have Dan Infault and Jeff Sturgis to thank for that. The hunting public got me started originally on this journey. So, look those guys up if you haven't already. It is December 19th, 2022. Tonight, I am going hunting over in Iowa for the opening of the second muzzleloader season. I have a buck tag and a doe tag for the senior, so I should get something. It will be my first out of state tag so, I am very excited to go to a different state and hunt on public ground. This will not be my first experience on public ground. My first experience came out in the Black Hills of South Dakota. I had a blast out there. No deer were taken, but I had a few close calls, including the biggest doe that I have ever seen. She was standing 20 yards away from me as I swung around the trees with the new mobile saddle system that I'm trying to use this year. Lessons were learned. I will remember that experience more than if I had killed her. Well, I guess in my case, put a bolt through her. That's why I hunt, for the story, not the kill. I'm shooting a crossbow because of a disability I have from a four-wheeler accident when I was a kid. I regret my voice is, well, nasally, but it's from the accident. I can't change that. It is what it is. Okay, now that I have that out of the way, let me inform you of the hunt that I have planned for tonight. Some of the signs I found while doing spring scouting, and a little bit about the current conditions. First of all, I'm planning on going hunting in this 60 yard by 60 yard clearing that my girlfriend and I found scouting. It is a little over a half mile back as a crow flies. 
according to Onyx. I will be using the satellite in top of view of the clearing provided by DeerCast. DeerCast offers a more up-to-date imagery in my experience. If you have any suggestions about what I should use for mapping, drop them in the comments below. I would like to know what everybody uses. Well, here you go. Here's the clearing I'm going to. There are a few rubs that we found in this clearing. The last rub, with my girlfriend standing next to it, was found about 150 yards to the north of the clearing. I've been in there looking around this area for about three or four times. Along with the rubs, we found a series of beds. A large buck bed was about 75 yards from the clearing on a point. And it had a trail that exited directly to the clearing. While scouting, I noticed a red oak tree that had dropped the previous year. It had shells everywhere. Some even with acorns still in them. Along with the rubs, there was scrapes on a big finger leading up to the clearing from the south. Now, I haven't been there since. Maybe sign will lead me elsewhere, but the clearing is the plan. While there isn't much wind in the forecast, it is coming out of the north. And with my thermals pulling down to the south off the ridge top about closing time, it should be ideal. I just have to try and not set up too close to the clearing because my scent will swirl in it, which makes it ideal for big bucks. I will be going hunting with my brother. So the hunt should be fun, deer not. So stay tuned. I will try to keep you informed as the hunt goes on. So enjoy the experience. Here we are. We're set up. Waiting for a deer.
Well, we didn't see anything tonight, but we were set up perfect for the clearing. I count this as a win. As we were walking to the clearing, it had snowed about an inch, which made it hard to see fresh sign or tracks. As we were walking out from the clearing, we cut three or four distinct trails the deer had made that night. I scouted this area in spring that we found the trails and there was Kentucky coffee trees where <laughs> the tracks led. While this tree is deer resistant, it appears that deer do eat the pods off the trees. Let me know in the comments if anyone has any experience hunting over these trees. Around the trees, there is this bowl that has beds throughout. It is going to be hard to get in there without being detected, but over the summer I have come up with a plan for access and I picked out an area to sit. I will share that hunt with you as I did this hunt. But I have a few places that I want to try as well, so I'm not sure if it'll be next time. That's what off-season scouting does. It gives you options. Most importantly, it gives you intel on where the best place to set up would be if fresh sound sign is found in an area. It gives you optimism for the next place. Till next time, always remember, never be complacent.